Hello, everybody in YouTube land. YouTube land. This is just a quick update. Gideon was in intensive care uh, just about all week. And we got him home this morning. So I am once again behind. I'm not going to say when I'm getting back to it because every time I do, something weird happens. Like with me, in my broken nose thing, which was healing very well. And then a window popped out because the high wind's here and it smacked me right in the nose. You know what you're looking at is something incredibly beautiful. Scientists like to make us believe and they know they're lying when they say this and they say things are random nope nothing is random what a magnificent piece of artwork these are what are they called hyacinths or chrysanthemum which I can't pronounce but they're very fragrant it was like one of my favorites of plants that you could just grow yourself without painting out through the nose for. But it is just so incredibly beautiful. But also, well, Gideon thought he was on his deathbed. Believe me, he's 81. He told me some startling things because he thought he was going to die. I suppose I should have known with his name being Gideon what nationality is. But he asked me, he said, do you know why we made money, meaning uh, his people or his ex-people because he <clears throat> turned away from that particular religion as soon as he became an adult and turned to Christianity once again I'm not a Christian I believe in God but I believe and it takes two I'll leave it there um, because that's what is on earth <clears throat> man and woman it takes two to create in any ways back to what he was saying and I'm gonna make this brief he said his father and this evidently is common among certain people or tribes of people or I don't even know I'm not gonna say and I hope you can understand when I say his name is Gideon uh, his nationality he said his father used to make him go out with him when he was younger and pick the um, clothes and shoes and jewelry off the dead and then they sell it so during a recession or hard times or especially war these people would just go out and strip the dead of their clothing and their shoes and then just sell them open up a little shop and sell them and that he said is because they only consider one people human and the rest are not so that's why they can commit such atrocities and of course he just has still nightmares from it from when he was made to do that I mean, that's a sad story, and that's his story. I haven't known him to lie or kind of exaggerate it as long as I've known him. Uh, the other thing, he just had a couple thoughts on this Assange thing. He said, if it isn't a, a LARP, as they call it today, it is about what is it going to take to motivate certain groups of people 
to uh, probe test in mass numbers. So it's kind of a, a test to see how far they can push people. And of course, they're always doing that, and there's no surprise in that. But he says if he makes it to America, Assad, his plane doesn't crash. They are going to make him denounce everything on WikiLeaks as false. And they will probably threaten his family. This is, this is how um, <clears throat> Gideon put it to me. He said, if you had a kid... Or even your dog. Well, my dog's passed. But you have your child or something that you love very much that's obviously living. Even as a, a Christian person, you put a gun to your kid's head and says, get on your knees and worship Satan. There is a dilemma there. If you say, no, I only believe in one God and that's Jesus Christ, and I will not bow. Then they shoot your kid. So is that selfish because you saved your soul over your kid's life? Or do you kneel, save your kid's life, and damn your soul? Here's what I told him. I said I wouldn't play. I told him I just wouldn't play the game. I, I would just tell him I, I make no choice. Because I don't, I, I wouldn't play. Of course, then again, we don't know how that would pan out. But anyways, that's his um, analysis of what they're about to do to um, Julian Assad. Assange, I'm sorry, <laughs> I call him Assad. <clears throat> that they're going to make him say that all the documents on WikiLeaks is false. Gideon says it's because he's exposed Israel for the trial, child trafficking and organ, live or, organ harvesting uh, from children and people. And yes, the documents are all over WikiLeaks. They're not even classified, so I don't know. In any event, I, I didn't want to make this uh, video this long. <coughs> Gideon is... Um, pulled through. That's why I'm behind. I <clears throat> had to take care of a lot of things for him. And of course visit him while he was in intensive care all week. So as soon as I can get those requests and send in some of that documentation before they shut down everything, I'll get right on it. So thank you to all the subscribers. And I do have some designs for a Assassinate Evil t-shirt. Or sweatshirt or whatever. I haven't really checked out those sites yet to raise money. And of course Gideon wasn't happy with me because I was supposed to set up a GoFundMe page for people to donate to not for the channel for it's going to be like people's legal fund because we we the people have to hire some constitutional lawyers to get before the supreme court and get a lot of these um israeli imposed laws out and have the um Congress and Senate and whomever uh, put the laws into reality arrested according to the Constitution. Just like the 13th and 14th Amendment is talking about you can't treat anybody special, no special groups, otherwise they have to pay restitution to the rest of us, which means giving Israel so much money, having no-go zones, having uh, Jewish zones, uh, just having zones for certain people, and the rest cannot have a zone, especially with this movement about white nationalists. So are we, we can call ourselves pink nationalists. I mean, our skin has a nice pink tone, is what he says. 
because mine has a different tone. Anyways, um, white nationalism. A person that supports his country that happens to be white. Happens to be colored white. <laughs> it's kind of funny, colored white. Anyways, uh, I'm kind of mumbling here. And I'll get right on it. I'm just happy Gideon's uh, with us for a bit longer. But like I said, he is getting old and he has some problems. And he keeps saying he's going to live to 125 because that's what the Bible says. That's what God promised. 125 years. And when people don't live as promised, the 125 years, they've been robbed. They've been robbed of their promise. Of course, you know. I kind of only slightly understand that. In any event, I want to thank you for hanging in there with us. And um, seems to be an ongoing thing with this channel. Every time we get going, something happens. But then I guess that's to be expected if an 81-year-old is running the channel. And now he got a reluctant person to help him out. All right, I'm just going to stop there because I'm babbling. Okay, thank you for watching. Enjoy the beauty of the world. And no, it's not random. It's not random at all. Look at that. It just is not random. It is just unbelievably beautiful.